All right, guys, today we've got a 2016 Ford Explorer with an airbag light on. So we wanted to show you a quick and easy way to test this without having to tear a bunch of stuff apart. Let's get into it. So this car came in with the airbag light on. That was the only complaint, right? Mm -hmm. And you pulled the code on it. Um, the codes are uh, drivers, front stage one deployment control. Okay, so we got a couple codes for that. So you looked it up. It's in the uh, steering wheel airbag, yep. right? There's two deployment circuits in here, and you're like, okay, I want to test this out. You looked up the testing procedure. What would, what did that entail? The testing procedure involved pulling the airbag out, okay, and then getting access to the SRS module, RCM. which is yeah, the airbag module, which is yep. in the center console. So you have to pull the center console out to unplug it. So then you could test the resistance through all the wires to the airbag. Okay, so basically it wanted him to get to the to the module, disconnect the connector, and what it was gonna have him do was check the resistance in the circuit up to this airbag. Um, that's a lot of time, that's a lot of time to do that. So we're gonna show you a way of doing it that's way, way faster and requires not getting to the module whatsoever. And we're gonna use the module itself and the way that it tests the circuit to uh, determine what's wrong with the car instead of having to do it manually with a meter. So, um, so cool. All right, well, let's get into the car. We're gonna let Clayton get back to work and then uh, we're gonna get in the car and we're gonna, we're gonna show you guys how, to, how we do it. Okay, before we get into this, I just wanna have a disclaimer. You're dealing with an airbag system, okay? Uh, personally, I've never had an airbag deploy, you know, because of something that I did. Um, there's a very specific procedure when you're dealing with these things on disconnecting the battery and disarming the airbag system. I'm going to show you a way of doing it that I'm not going to do any of that because I'm, I know that when I get in there and do this testing, I'm perfectly fine. I've, I've done this hundreds of times and never had an issue. Um, just know what circuit you're in. Be very careful. Don't use a power probe on this system whatsoever. And you're not going to use a multimeter in this car. Uh, there are a couple of multimeters that you can use that are made, probably more than a couple, but that are specifically made for airbag systems to check the resistances and stuff. But you're not going to need it with the way we're going to show you how to do it. And when, when we show you how to do this thing, you're going to be like, oh, wow, it's so easy. So, uh, but just be aware you are dealing with an airbag system. So let's get into it a little bit. And I'm gonna, we've already gained access to some stuff. And we've already done the testing on it. We already know what's going on with this car. I just want to show you how we came to the, to the uh, solution and how fast that we came to the solution. So let's get in the car. Okay, so first thing, we got our codes. We know what our codes are. We've done the, you know, Clayton's done the, the, um, the leg work on finding out it is for the uh, steering wheel airbag. So I'm gonna go ahead, <clears throat> hopefully you can see this. Is, what I'm gonna do is go into data. We're using the little Odo fix here. Um, I, this is a cool little scanner to be honest with you. It's got Altel uh, built onto it, it looks like, and, and uh, it's a nice little little form factor, small, wireless. I think this thing's 400 bucks. We are gonna do a review on this, but we're trying to just get some time on it, and so I figured I'd hook it up to this to see what it would do. Um, you know, pretty heavy duty too. I think the thing feels pretty good, so. All right, so we're gonna get some data here. We've got the air, the, right now, the everything's plugged in just like it came in. Uh, the codes that are in it are the codes that it came in with. And we're gonna go in and we're just gonna show you, just gonna grab a couple of, I'm gonna grab both of these uh, stages on this airbag. And then I am gonna grab passenger side just so I can show you, um, oops, I don't want the curtain. Just so I can show you Tether. Yeah, oh yeah, hang on, sorry. All right, this is what we want right here. Major one stage. All right, so let's go ahead and show selected. Okay, so if we look, and this I have found to be true of most airbag systems, okay? Now, I'm not saying this is every single car built, but most of your airbag systems, each circuit in the system usually runs about two and a half to three ohms of resistance. So, that being said, if we know that, we can go in here and we can immediately go, well, what's this 6.1 we got up here? Well, we know that's not good. It's supposed to be 
two and a half to three ohms. Clayton did look up the data on this. He did see that these things, I think it says, um, he said that the spec was two to 4.4 ohms. I've never seen 4.4 personally, um, never even seen four. We're usually running in the, in the two and a half to three range, okay? So the way that this module tests each one of these circuits, so each deployment loop in here, in this, in this airbag, is a circuit. So we've got two in here, so I'm just gonna pop this loose. We've already got it off, I mean. So if we look in here, you can see there's two connectors here because there's two deployment loops. So um, each one of these is checked by the, by the um, airbag module and it's looking at a certain resistance through this entire circuit. So the airbag, the wiring, every connector, everything. And that's what it's showing us here is what that, what that resistance is. And that's how this module tests every single circuit in here. Well, once it sees one out of range, then it will say, okay, we'll throw the airbag light on and it'll, it'll dis it should disable that circuit. Why, why would it disable that circuit? Because these things are firing, we're talking about microseconds here, right? So we're talking these things need to fire. Ex that's why there's two stages. It's gonna fire one and then fire the other uh, because you're gonna be coming into it and it doesn't wanna just blow you back to the back of the car. Um, which is like the, some of the old school ones were. So the resistance is extremely important because it needs to know that when it says to fire that, it's going to fire right when it says to do it. So that's why it disables and, and um, throws lights on when you see high resistance. All right, so that's kind of the basis on how that works. Let's, I'm going to go in here now. This is, this is one of the ones where people say, oh, gosh, you haven't disabled the system. The key is on. What are you doing, right? I'm, I get you, I understand, and you need to do what you feel like is right and safe for you. I'm telling you that I've done this hundreds of times and never had an issue, uh, but I don't do crazy stuff. I'm not gonna sit here and put power on things and, and that. So uh, I'm just gonna take, if we look here, we've got a couple of locking clips here, okay? So I'm just gonna pop those locking clips up very carefully. I don't wanna damage the connector. And if you notice when I pop those up, the resistance changed, okay? So we went from uh, 2.9 and 6.3 or whatever it was there to 4.1 and 0.9. It's because there is a shorting bar inside of these and um, it's now uh, basically shorting that, that connector out. So that's not a problem, that's normal, that's okay. We're okay with that, we know what we're doing here. So now what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna pop these two off. Again, I'm being really gentle here. All right, so I'm gonna take that airbag. This is one thing that you know we should do. Uh, the airbag, if you're gonna if you're gonna put it aside somewhere, put it outside the vehicle. Uh, I'm, again, I've never seen one blow up on accident, but put it outside the vehicle and have it facing up so that if you have it facing like that, it were to deploy, it's gonna send this whole thing up. Just have it facing up. Just put it outside the vehicle. It's safe there. Nobody's gonna mess with it. Okay, so. Let me show you my little trick, and I'm going to bring over this whole thing right here. It's a mess right now. Um, that is a two and a half ohm resistor, okay? And this was originally, I think, 5,000 of them. Yes, 5,000 of these were in this, are in this. So if you look at it, um, they're just sitting there in little tape, and I just dropped like six of them. So... <laughs> Um, these things cost like, when I bought these were like 39 bucks for these. So for me, it's like, okay, I can, I've got a decade box from, um, uh, automotive test solutions and I can dial in two and a half ohms of resistance. I don't have it in the building right now. It's over at the other shop. And these things right here, I've got sitting here. I've had these for, I don't know how long I've had these for a very, very long time. So if you guys check on them and you see that they're more money now, put in a, put down below, comment down below on how much they are now. But um, they're still going to be super, super cheap for what we're doing. And we're not going to be worried about it. If I lose it or if they fall on the ground, I mean, there's there's four of them sitting right there. I'm going to pick them up, but, you know, I'm not worried about it. not overly concerned. So let's go ahead and let me show you what we're going to do with this. All right. So right now we've got, I don't know if you can see this or not. Let's put this up here. We can see it, maybe. Try to get it where you guys can get a good view of it. The cameraman can get a good view of it when he needs to. I don't know if that's going to work or not. There we go. Is that good? 
Mm -hmm. Maybe. All right, cool. All right, so right now we got 65.54 ohms on each one of these circuits. It is disconnected right now. Okay. So uh, I will tell you that that's basically open. I, I know it's not open. I know it's 65 ohms, but that's going to be open because the module just knows that it's disconnected and that's just what it's going to show. So what I'm going to do is take this and I'm just going to bend it where I can get it into these little pins here. It's not going to damage anything. I'm not going to jam it in there. I'm just going to set it in there. And what I'm going to do here is this is going to simulate the airbag. So the airbag is roughly two and a half ohms of resistance. This is two and a half ohms of resistance. This is just basically simulating the airbag. Um, they make simulators. I'm, I'm a lot of manufacturers back in the day made simulators. I'm still, they, I'm sure they still do today. I'm sure you can buy them like that. To me, it's just like, you know, why do I want to buy something that's, you know, 30, 40, 50 bucks. We'll work on one car maybe and not on something else when I can buy so many, 5,000 of these things are going to last me a lifetime and I can use it on anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and I am going to put it in. My eyes are not as good as they once were and that's some tiny little holes, but I'm going to put it in that. And if we look up there at that scanner now and we see that deployment stage two is 2.9, right? So we all, I hope you all can see that right here. That went to 2.9 now because now I've got the resistor in place. So I'm going to put, take the resistor out. So keep watching the scanner there. So I'm just going to pull this out, right? And there it goes to back up to 65, okay? That was the one that was good. So we didn't have an issue with that to begin with. And I just proved to you that I can put this in and it's going to go right back to the same reading as it did with the airbag in place. Now let's put it in the bad one or the one that flagged as bad. So, all right, I've got it in there. And we're at 6.1, so it's still too high. It's, it's reading about where it was when the airbag was plugged in. So what does that tell me? Well, that tells me that putting an airbag in this thing is not going to fix this car. Because all I'm going to do, all I've done here is replace the airbag with this. So I'm still going to have too high a, of uh, resistance in that circuit. So I've already got the, this apart. We go under. So we have a clock spring sitting right behind this steering wheel. And what the clock spring is, is just a wound ribbon that all of your uh, airbag circuits go through it, your steering wheel controls go through it, and it's, you know, think about it, we've got wires that are, that are here that are going to all of this, we've got wires for the airbag, and then we've got wires connected to the bottom, we've got to be able to, to have that continuity through there, we've got to be able to have electricity go through it without breaking, so we've got to have something that'll be able to turn and not break. So all it is is a wound up ribbon, and as you turn the wheel, it just can, it makes contact the whole time. So what, what are we going to do here? We're going to take this. We're going to go back under here. And I'm going to disconnect the base of the, of the clock spring. So this is the connector going into the clock spring. This has got both airbag um, circuits in it. So both airbag uh, loops in it. It's also got our... Uh, steering wheel, it's got your cruise control and your radio and all this, you know, telephone, everything is going to go through here also. Um, so that's this connector. All right. I know that the circuit that I'm concerned with, luckily, is the easiest one to get to. It's this yellow and this purple. So super easy to get to. And I'm just going to take this resistor and I'm going to put it here. Okay. Now, I could I go on this side and put it in? Sure, I can. But it's just as easy for me to do it here, and I'm, you know, and I've got way less chance of, of damaging any kind of pin. And what am I doing by doing that? I'm taking this resistor now, and basically what I'm doing is I'm taking an airbag and I'm plugging it into this connector. So what am I checking? Well, if I plug this into this connector, and it is good on the scanner, then that means that the clock spring up here, right, is no good because I know it's bad on the top of the clock spring. So if it's if it's good if I get a good reading at the module at the, going into the clock spring then I know the clock spring is a problem so let's do it so I'll take this can't get good contact in here again I'm trying to get it in here and see it Sorry guys, I'm trying to keep it on the camera and keep it where I can see it at the same time. And it's not as easy as it looks on camera. All right, 
So I'm going to hold it there. If we look up at the scanner now, what do we have on deployment loop one? 2.3 ohms. So that's good. We're good. So now we know. So I'm going to pull this out. Keep looking at the scanner. I'm going to pull it out. And there we go. So, okay. What does that tell us? And that tells us that that clock spring is no good. So we know that at the above the clock spring, it is not good. We know below the clock spring, it's good when I, when I put a simulated airbag in that circuit. So I know the clock spring is the problem. And I know it's going to fix it because I'm actually using the airbag module to do the test. The airbag module is what it's reading is the resistance. And what it's looking for is a certain range for that resistance to be in. And I just used its own testing to put the correct and use the correct resistor here and put its own, did its own testing. And it, and it said, yeah, it's good. That's going to be the right resistance. I guarantee you that we could take that, put that resistor in there and plug the airbag in and clear the codes and the codes would be gone. They won't come back. So I'm not going to need to do that, but we could do it. Um, so how does this relate to the way it tells you to test it through the, uh, the tree? Well, basically the, what that's telling you to do is access the module, get to the connector, get to this circuit. So get to the wires on that end, right? And then we're going to take, we're going to unplug everything. We're going to take a meter, we're gonna, a proper meter that can do it. And we're going to check the resistance of all those wires. And it's going to say, check them above, check them below. And I didn't look it up. I'm just telling you what I know it's going to say. And it's going to come to the same conclusion. I mean, this is so much quicker. In the time it took us, basically, Clayton had this out uh, in just a few minutes by just popping the airbag clips and pulling that out. Uh, I pulled this loose, probably took me, I don't know, maybe five minutes to get the covers off the, the um, steering wheel, you know, and in able to do this testing and this testing. I mean, I'm sitting here talking and we're talking about maybe 20 minutes worth of total work to get an answer. And I know 100% that's gonna fix the car, no doubt about it. So this is just a quick, easy way to do testing on airbag systems, um, cheap, you know, and certainly I would I always tell you, you know, go to ATS um, Tools, uh, Automotive Test Solutions, you can buy that decade box and you can have, it's got tons of resistors in it. You, you just flip your switches until you get the right resistance or, you know, go buy one of these, you know, buy a bunch of these things right here and use them for your airbags. Let me footnote this. Always look up the resistances first. Always know what you're looking at. I've been doing this a long time. I knew what we were looking for. You know, um, Clayton had already looked up the specs. So, you know, use the use the use your service information and know what you're looking at. But this is just a really, really simple way to do it. And you know it's going to fix it. And now, all we got to do now is pull the, pull the steering wheel off, install our clock spring, put the steering wheel back on. And this car is going to be, clear the codes, car is going to be fixed and ready to go. Um, one other quick side note, I'm going to go grab something and I'll be right back. I want to just, while we're talking about airbag systems. So, a lot of times with airbags, we're looking at resistance. You see that this, this module is looking at resistance and that's how it's testing the circuits. And many times these connectors will just get a little bit of, of varnish on them. They'll get a little bit of, you know, um, fretting on them, uh, just won't be making a great contact. Now this isn't the case in this, in this one, but I've seen lots of them underneath seats, um, seat belt connectors, things like that, where it's got a, uh, a bad connection, right? Bad connection. It's very, very, just slightly off. And this is Stablent 22. Um, you can get this pretty much anywhere. You can get it on any parts store. You can get it at Amazon. Um, We'll put the link down below. Um, not cheap. Uh, I forget last time I bought some. I mean, this is a little, I think a two ounce bottle or something like that. 80 bucks to 110, depending on where you buy it from. Um, it's gonna come in a little tube and it's gonna have some little brushes in it. So basically, because it's expensive, you just take, you just take the liquid and you put a little bit on the brush and you just brush it on the connector, on the, on the terminals. This is good not just for airbags. I mean, this is good for any kind of, you know, and I'll be honest, I don't have any clue how this stuff works and I don't believe in miracles in a bottle and this stuff is miracle in a bottle. 
It will make a connection. It will clean a connection. I don't know how it works. Uh, I was I was told about it one time many years ago on on somehow it makes a mechanical bond. I don't know how it does that with a liquid, but um, the stuff is really really good. And I have fixed. Oh my gosh, I, I can't tell you how many airbag lights I've turned off by just finding the circuit, finding the connector, putting a little bit of Stablement 22 on it, putting it back together, and that thing will be fixed and never come back. So. Uh, just a really good side note. I know it's not part of this diagnosis, but a good side note for an airbag um, diagnosis. So, um, trying to think if there's anything else on an airbag system, really, while we're in here talking. I, I think that's it. Be careful with them. Uh, you know, follow service procedures and stuff. If you're not 100% confident on, on doing something like this, certainly you can go by the service procedure and do it. Uh, it's just more time consuming, but I'd highly recommend this. Get used to it. And, um, yeah, I think it's, a, I think it's a, great, uh, a great tool to have in your arsenal to be able to diagnose something quick and, and not have to go back to the client to say, hey, we need to pull your whole console and everything out of this car. I mean, what a colossal waste of time that would have been. We would have pulled the whole console and everything out of it just to test the circuit. The client would be paying to pull all that apart, and then we were like, oh, well, we need to do a, do a clock spring, which we're already at, right? So um, anyway, all right. So that's it for the airbag diagnosis on this one. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please give us that thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. How do you guys test them? You guys have any other different uh, different tools that you use or different techniques that you use? We love to hear them. And uh, hit that notification bell so that you get notified every time we we leave a uh, uh, we, we we drop a video down. So thanks again. We'll see you in the next one.